we have chairs stashed under the under the table, so when we have a good size author event, we can move everything around. That's Bill Petricelli. He's one of the co-owners of the bookstore Book Passage. We are in the Ferry Building in San Francisco, which is probably the most exciting venue for activity and, and market and for visitors in the city. I just pulled this one out to show you because on the shelf, that's my own book. I wrote this uh, four years ago now. It's called The Circle of Thirteen, and it's a novel. Petricelli's store is heavy on events where authors come and do readings, talk about their work, and sign books for fans. Book Passage says it holds about 800 of these events per year between its stores and special events around the Bay Area. If you're keeping track, that's a lot of autographed books. That's, I think, the best part of the book business, when the author and the reader get together in your store and have a little discussion. It's wonderful. Everything seemed fine for Petrocelli and his business until a curious new law passed in California regulating autograph signings. Now something is finally being done. Starting January 1st, any autograph collectible sold in California must come with a certificate of authenticity. The law was meant to crack down on autograph fakers who dupe customers, but critics say it's much more. It's a certificate of authenticity requirement on steroids, which essentially requires, you know, all of this information. It's very difficult to comply with. That's Petricelli's attorney, Anastasia Bowden, with the Pacific Legal Foundation. She's helping him sue the state over the law, saying it violates Petricelli's freedom of speech because it forces him to keep track of a burdensome amount of information. And that includes details about the sale, the date, the time, the place, the amount of money, whether the seller is bonded. If the book was signed in front of the person, a witness to the signing, and their personal details. If the book was obtained second hand, the name of the previous owner. Anything that requires extra paperwork is going to drive up the cost of doing business. This is the children's section back here and it's children who come to a lot of events to see their favorite author, want their book signed, meet their favorite author. And if we're going to have to go through record keeping to keep track of every, of every child that buys a book, I mean, top of everything else, it invades their privacy. <laughs> it's just crazy. The sellers also have to keep a copy of that record for seven years or face costly penalties. A civil court could reward duped customers as much as 10 times the original cost of the faked item. If a book is a rare limited edition and more expensive, the bookseller could be on the hook for the price of the book and 10 times the price of the book on top of that. And that's not all. Anybody could sue to enforce the law and get court costs, attorney fees, interest, expert witness fees, and any relief the court finds appropriate. This law just is like a, just dropping a bomb in the middle of it. It's terrible. But why would anyone pass a law for such an inconsequential issue like fake autographs? That is a story from a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. I'm Luke Skywalker. I'm here to rescue you. We all know Mark Hamill for his role as Luke Skywalker, battling the Galactic Empire in the Star Wars movies. <laughs> Yep, that classic tale of when politicians team up with celebrities. This law originated as any law does, and that is with somebody with a lot of political clout and a sob story. And so in this case, it was Mark Hamill, AKA Luke Skywalker, who had the sob story that people were being swindled out of quote, hundreds of dollars for buying fake Mark Hamill autographs. So he approached the legislature and said, we need a law for that. I've heard a couple of stories that just break your heart because there's no way to compensate them. A couple of people I've actually sought out and sent real autographs. And what came of it was this law. The politician behind the autograph law was Assemblywoman Ling Ling Chang. Her bill flew through the California legislature in a breeze. Then booksellers kind of got word of this and looked at it, oh my God, this could apply to autograph books right on the face of it. But when Petricelli tried to get the bill fixed, things got worse. And when we approached our local people, our local assemblymen and all that, and said, you know, you got to do something, they said, well, you got to go back to the author of the bill and maybe in the next session, she'll introduce a bill correcting it. We said, she lost in the last election. She's not there. So somebody's got to take responsibility for this. Cheng chose not to sit down with us for an interview, but did tell us via email that she stands by the bill. She also said the booksellers were exempt from AB 1570 because the law says a dealer must be principally in the business of selling collectibles. But Bowden says the word principally here is vague, and arguably Petrocelli is principally engaged in selling autographed books. In addition to holding hundreds of events with autograph signings every year, Book Passage even has a first edition autograph book club you can join. So this is how he's innovated in the age of Amazon and Kindle. She also says the potential penalties in the autograph law are so high that they may scare people away from engaging in protected speech. Signatures are protected by the First Amendment. Owning a signature, that means something to somebody, and I think that's expression. But Chang may not be the only politician out there that doesn't understand the consequences of passing vague laws. 
A bill in the Assembly has popped up that tries to fix the damage that Chang's bill caused, Assembly Bill 228. It exempts items from the law that sell for less than $50, but that doesn't help Petrocelli. It doesn't give him any relief. You know, he sells books that are worth over $50 all the time. Also, there's this tiny detail. AB 228 limits the autograph law to sports and entertainment memorabilia. But if you take a look around Petrocelli's store, you can see he has entertainment and sports books for sale. On the day we visited, he was even advertising a book signing for one. And if that isn't troubling enough, think about this. Book Passage recently hosted an event where Caitlyn Jenner came and promoted her biography. And Caitlyn Jenner was formerly a sports star and is also now an entertainment star. And so it would seem that her book still qualifies for this autograph law. And AB 228 really does nothing for Bill in that case. And that's a perfect example. Is, Kate, was, is the Caitlyn Jenner biography a sports book or not? <laughs> it kind of depends on how you think about it. And if you, have to, if you have to make that kind of decision on every single book in the store, It'll drive you crazy. There is another bill that could protect Petrocelli, Senate Bill 579. Right now, the Senate bill actually looks fairly good. It does, at this moment, it seeks to exempt books. But it's not the one getting any of the publicity. The one that's getting all the publicity is AB 228, which is, you know, backed by Barnes & Noble and the antiquarian booksellers and um, people like that. Meanwhile, this little old bill in the Senate that actually would do some good is supported by the auctioneers, and that one seems to not be getting any attention at all. Petrocelli seems to be in a holding pattern until something happens with his lawsuit or until one of the new bills gets passed, if they ever do. But he's not taking his tenuous situation lying down. In fact, we caught him in the middle of an illegal act against the state before we left his store. I managed to talk you into getting a copy of my book, which is here, which is one of the many books we sell. I'll do what I'm doing right here, which is to put a little inscription on it. To Paul, thanks for everything. It's really too bad we won't ever know if his autograph is real.